We just want to share this information because we went through all this stuff without this type of information and we were okay for the most part but also you know there's things that could have gone a little bit better things that could have gone a little bit smoother mm -hmm. so here we are talking about that uh more than anything it's been requested by a few people when we did this at anime next people requested it uh you know there's been other people online and facebook groups and uh, a couple other places that wanted and a couple people in our workplaces as well so Anyone who asked for this type of thing, this is for you. If you didn't ask for it, well, you have it. So do what you will with it. <laughs> Thanks for watching it ahead of time then. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so if you guys saw us at Anime Next, thank you for actually coming back to watch this video if you do. Because I'm definitely going to post it on that group and all the other anime related groups that people have been, you know, asking me about. So disclaimer, we are not travel agents. We're not affiliated with any travel agencies or uh, Airbnb, any hotel lines, uh, airlines, et cetera, et cetera, just to get that stuff out of the way. Yeah. We're literally just travelers. We've gone once in 2017 around Halloween time, and we're going back in 2020, um, like two weeks after Anime Next and like finishing by half a week before the Olympics started, stuff like that. So we are going to have some updated information for our upcoming trip and you guys will learn what you know things we've improved upon things we've changed some you know special like tips and tricks that we've picked up since then so yeah uh, i think we're ready to get started yeah Did you i have mean anything uh, else in no, that, that's pretty much everything. Uh, very well said, Eve. So I guess yeah. we'll uh, just uh, continue with this, and we hope you guys enjoy it. And, oh, also, before we start, um, we will be providing a lot of links to you guys, and every a lot of the things that we mention in here, we're going to provide links to. Now, we might not get, you know, like every business that we talk about or thing that we suggest to do in Japan, but we will definitely do our best uh, when it comes to travel documentation we find that that is the most important stuff to have mm -hmm. so we are going to link you to that mm -hmm. also uh, we're going to link you to the information as far as uh, accruing frequent flyer miles and stuff like that yep. once again I can't stress this enough uh, we are not sponsored by anyone. We're doing this of our own volition, and <laughs> we're not like we're not trying to make money off of this. We're just trying to share information. So mm -hmm. uh, take that as you will, and uh, let's begin. Yes. Okay. So, like we kind of did a little bit of an overview of, we're going to give you the basics of how to travel to Japan, what you need to start out with, um, i.e., money transportation to and from and then also travel accommodations while you're there in japan so um like we were saying before we've already gone and we're going again and we've already seen a huge difference in prices because we're going on a different season um and we're also going for longer so when we went originally we went for 10 days yes and um I think that included also the like the first day when we got there super late because you know time zone differences. Yeah, we were there at what like so uh, basically like, it was really like nine days. Yeah, so we got there at what like was it nine o'clock at night or like two in the morning? I forget. It was like past midnight because yeah, we couldn't yeah. take any trains. We had to take the bus. Oh right, yeah, yeah that is, and that then is the bus true. only took us to a specific hotel that was sort of close to where the Airbnb was, and then we had to walk. But it was yeah. fine. I mean, you know, it was literally an uphill and downhill battle because we had to walk <laughs> up so many hills. But, yeah, so that'll be talked about yeah. shortly. I mean, either way, you guys are going to be walking a lot, so you might as well start stretching your legs on the first day yeah. if you can. Exactly. So, you know, we're comparing a 10-day trip previously where we really only spent, I want to say, mm. nine nights there. And I know we only used the rail pass for seven, seven we days. We got it for seven days. But on the days. eighth day, we needed to... We well, exactly, because so, so, yeah, it was definitely nine days. So essentially we then. activated it on the second day and then we ran out of it on the second to last yes. day. Yeah. So it was 10 days total. This time we're going for 20 nights. So that's 21 days total because that first day, you know, you got the time zone change. So then you're, you're out a whole day. But then what's nice is on the way back, um, you're literally flying within like the same day, even though it's like 15 hours worth. Yep, so that's you're kind of nice. the sun for the most part. Yeah. Okay. So, um, 
then we're going to get into like what things you should pack and then that you know plays into the whole when are you traveling it depends on the season um you know s basic supplies to bring like toiletries things like that places to find food um shopping sightseeing etiquette that we've picked up because you know we have some stories about that and then we're also going to talk about culture shock communication things that we would change with our communication local guides um and then also maybe some adult stuff i don't know if we were going to get into that it's yeah. on the powerpoint but i don't know if we wanted to like yeah and when we that. say adult stuff we're not like talking about anything like degenerate we're just talking about kind of like nightlife type of <laughs> <Yeah>. stuff <laughs> And things like that. But um, so besides that, uh, so now that you know kind of the overview, we're going to talk about before you even leave. And when we say before you even leave, I would say like a minimum of six months ahead of time is the time that you need to plan. Now, the first time that we went, we planned it a year ahead of time. But that also included, you know, us getting things like all squared away about six months ahead this time around we've thought about it for about two years we've planned around other people mm -hmm. and we've uh you know kind of been bringing it together little by little so it's been a bit of an easier process for the most part yeah since we had planned to go specifically for the olympics we already knew our time frame and then we were also trying to factor in, oh, if we can get 10 total people going, it's going to probably be around this much. Or if we can get more than that going, maybe we can get a discount with the airline tickets. And then, so this time we're going with... Uh, it's six, six people total. Six people, yeah, it's six people total. So we're going with four other people. So um, now that means when... So we always do Airbnb. It's way cheaper... If you're not really into that, of course there's hotels, but you know, you're gonna be paying for more, and then especially in summertime, tourist season. Um, so then that's another thing that you have to factor in. It's like, well, you're gonna have a discount because you have more people going, but then you also are limited to the places, because as everyone knows, a lot of places in Japan are very small. So even though you're getting an Airbnb that fits six, it might not always be, you know, the most comfortable which we've experienced in the past, and we'll talk about that shortly. So, like we said, you got to figure out what your preparations are going to be. How many people are you going with, and when are you going? That's very important to figure out first. Mm -hmm. um, so, <clears throat> you always need to make sure you have an up-to-date passport, too. So, yeah, that's um, the Brandon's got his little here, and then it's got our air china stamps on it from last time even though we're not flying with them this time since they weren't offering the same thing so looking at brandon's uh uh passport here it expires in 2027 because it is 10 years after you get it so since we got it in 2017 he's totally fine but if you've had yours for a while double check on it Make sure it's up to date. You're going to have a hard time coming back if it expires while you're over there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and also, uh, so um, <laughs> while we're talking about passports, the number one thing to remember with this, and I'm just going to keep this short because the plane ticket section is a different section, make sure your information matches your uh, plane ticket on uh, what's going to be on your plane ticket on your uh, passport. So say you have your first, middle, and last name on your passport, which you definitely will, make sure you put that on your plane ticket. We almost got denied our flight last time, but we got lucky because it was a policy that had just like gone through the day that we were flying. Luckily, the air uh, port staff were really cool about it, and they said, well, this just came through, and they're arguing about it anyway, so we're just going to let you on. That's the type of thing that middle initial right uh yes it is yeah. so that's like the type of thing that could really foul your trip up really quick <clears throat> so just make yeah. sure everything matches so you don't have to worry about it um okay besides that so <laughs> going into the actual meat of this uh i would actually like to start this out with a little bit of a hard truth um being that we're looking at going as cheaply as possible and preparing you know a minimum of a year i would suggest two years ahead of time what you have to keep in mind with this is even though you will be able to get the trip a little bit cheaper by doing that and also by following a couple of the things we suggest, if you are in a situation where 
even if this trip is, you know, all the accommodations and the flight are free and all you need is spending money, but you're in a situation where that spending money wouldn't even come easy to you or you can't, uh, you know, you can't justify spending that type of money, I suggest waiting it out for a little bit because, you know, as you know, this might be a dream vacation, but there is, it's a really bad idea to go on something like this and then come home and be miserable. You, you yeah, don't exactly. want to do that. So we've given advice in the past where if you know you are traveling to any country, really. It doesn't have to be Japan. If you're traveling outside of the country, everyone knows international flights are always more expensive than domestic. Uh, you know, By not not counting like business class and first class and all that stuff. That stuff's always expensive to begin with. You need to be able to have saved, you know, enough for this trip. So if you are a person mm -hmm. that likes to go to almost as many possible conventions as you can, maybe cut back on that for a little bit. Mm -hmm. I mean... When Brandon and I came back from Japan, you know, not to degrade any of the cons, because, like, you know, we like going to conventions, too. There's just some stuff you're not going to get that experience if you just keep going to the same con over and over and over again, spending 500 every single weekend, and you know you're going to be spending that because you're, you know, paying for the hotel, paying for the con itself, and then buying stuff in there. If you yeah, know that you do that, that... Yeah, most of that gets spent before they even get to the con. Yeah, exactly. And like, then yeah, they'll get, buying, like, buying people new get, cosplays. like, a plush or something like that yeah. and call it a day. Yeah, so if you know that you're a person that does that stuff and you mm. want to make this trip a reality, mm. you have to limit your spending. You know, it's kind of being, like, fiscal re fiscally responsible, responsible because then you could say to yourself... Oh, you know, I didn't get to go to this year's KatsuCon or this year's Anime Next or whatever. But then you could also say, but I went to Japan. I went to the place that every, you know, nerd and weeb dreams of. <laughs> and I think that's kind of, you know, a little bit bigger picture there. Um, you'll start to also appreciate things a little bit differently, I think. You know, it's nice to be able to have a little slice of the culture. But when you're there in person experiencing it, it's a totally different, you know, like, sensation. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And really what it comes down to is that, you know, doing stuff like this and preparing for stuff like this, especially when you're kind of the ringleader with it, or it's only, you know, <laughs> maybe you're going alone or maybe it's only two people, you know, it'll give you a lot of experience in, you know, kind of planning things out that could be applied to life in general, because, um, you know, the funny thing, before we went the first time, uh, we were both living at home. Now, obviously, that's, you know, that's changed <laughs> because, as you can see, we're not recording on, you know, someone's bed in their <laughs> very yeah, or small our, room. Or a couch. Or, or the computer room with all the, you know, Christmas decorations and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so that was kind of like a kick to like, okay, we're, we're literally, not only are we on our own for the next 10 days, we're in a completely different country mm -hmm. where, you know, in a way, like we're foreigners here, you know, we're not able to call our parents up or call a friend <laughs> up for a ride or anything yeah, like so that, true. you know, so it's, it's a lot of really good experience and, you know, you, you're going to learn when you're outside of the country you know, say you're walking, you need a drink, you know, you're not going to be able to stop into your local, you know, mini Mart. Oh, wow. Yeah, you're not going to be able mm -hmm. to stop in your local mini mart, where, you know, one of your friends works and you're like, and you say, Oh, well, you know, I, I don't have any money right now. Mm -hmm. But let me hit you back. And then, yeah. you know, it's no big deal here. It's it's not going to matter. Because once again, no one knows you. You know, they... You don't have those luxuries. Exactly. It's just that you're yeah. you're kind of on an island in a way. Which, I mean, you're literally on an <laughs> island because Japan is an island. But yes, that is geographically yeah. correct, Brandon. Yeah, exactly. Archipelago but, at the top, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that makes sense. Um, yeah, so, you know, we got to get, like, kind of the harsh truths out of the way because this is a very, you know, I, I guess it's kind of, like, goofy but to say, but, like, kind of like an adult kind of thing, like... We're, you know, we're 27 now. When we went, we were 25. Um, but before that, you know, just thinking about this, this is a trip that we wanted to go on since we were, like, five, six, seven. When we first saw, like, Speed Racer, Pokemon, mm -hmm. Dragon Ball Z, uh, uh, Sailor Moon, all that good stuff. Like, that's just... And then also seeing it in the magazines, like, um, 
Yeah, like was... uh, the so tips and tricks had the Japan report. Yeah. There was Anime Insider, exactly. You know, yeah, stuff and then like, like in Nintendo Power, you'll see like, oh, here's the stuff that's happening at the Tokyo Games Expo and stuff like that. Like all those things, you know, that's it's just years and years building up. Like, oh man, I really want to be able to go, and it's very intimidating. You just literally have to decide. Hey, I'm gonna do this, so I'm only focusing on this. I can't focus on all these other little distractions. Yeah, and it is kind of funny because in a way it like it sort of forces you to grow up a little bit, and this is just traveling in general, but the funny thing is when I was like 15, 16 years old, I was like, yeah, I'm gonna go to Japan as soon as I can, and I imagine <laughs> myself as like, you know, 20, 21 years old going to Japan, whether I went alone or with a group of friends, I, I would not have been able to survive that. Mm -hmm. And that's as someone who was fairly fiscally responsible his whole life. But that's neither here nor there. You'll figure it out one day. Yeah. Or, you know, <laughs> I mean, like, uh, honestly, like, I'm just, I'm more speaking to the younger crowd right now. Yeah. But, you know, I'm, I'm sure you could do it. Just, you just have to be prepared. Yeah, I mean, like, when we've done the, this panel and presentation before, like, uh, when it wasn't at Anime Next and it was at Dover Comic Con, we had mostly, like, families in that panel. It was mostly adults as if they were going to plan a family trip. Mm -hmm. So, you know, maybe it's a possibility instead of, like, going to Disney for that year, you go to Japan. Which is you funny because it will Japan. literally... Yeah, <laughs> but it's kind of funny, though, because, like, some, be in some <laughs> cases, it will be cheaper. That is true, but... Yeah, I mean, I've heard that, like, a weekend Disney vacation could be, like... $8,000? Well, on the high end. I've heard the low end, it's, like, three grand. Yeah, like, ball and outrageous is, At like, $8,000. Yeah. You can go to Japan for cheaper than that, so... Yeah, and I can yeah. make my own Mickey Mouse-shaped pretzels. Thank you. <laughs> right. Okay, so getting back to the topic at hand... Uh, after you figure out when you want to go, you need to figure out where you want to go. So when we went, we literally just said, oh, Tokyo, Tokyo and the boroughs. And we didn't realize that like each borough is basically like its own, like kind of big city experience in every single borough. Yeah. Saying you want to go to Tokyo is such a gaijin thing to say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of funny. I mean, like, I know it's like weird to say that, but I didn't understand it till I was there. But if someone asks you, oh, where are you going? Tokyo. I mean, that's like, Tokyo is a mega city. It's crazy, especially because of the fact that, like, you know, a lot of people look at, like, you know, Manhattan as, like, a way to kind of compare it since it's also a big city. It's just, like, a completely different world, though, just because of the fact that, like, the boroughs don't really work the same way, but the boroughs are also massive as yeah. well. Yeah, I mean, it's basically, like, I don't know, it feels like five New Yorks next to each other. And yeah. That, that includes, you know, like, down from, like, Brooklyn to, like, Harlem or something like that. Like, that whole big area, just stack it next to each other, like, five times. Oh, yeah. It's nuts. So, that's definitely something you want to keep within, you know, your scope of your travels. Because I also see a lot of people post online, they're like, oh, you know, I want to get the full, like, experience. So, they'll only have, like, five days there, but they'll also want to travel to, like, all the big cities. So, like... Tokyo, Kyoto, Osaka, and then even, like, you know, up higher, um, like, in the Kanto region, things like that. Like, they're gonna want to try and cram so much into one trip, and then you just have, you gotta just take a step back and say, I know I'm not gonna be able to do all this, and you're gonna ruin your, your time if you are like, oh, man, I didn't get to go over here, I didn't get to go over there. It's like, you don't want to worry yourself about that. Just focus on what you're able to focus on. Yeah, exactly. And the biggest thing you will regret, trust me, it's not going to be spending a little bit too much money. It's not going to be, you know, like missing out on one or two things to do a couple other things. The biggest thing you will regret will be wasting a day. Yeah. Because when that happens, you don't get that time back. It's mm -hmm. not like, you know, oh, you know, I slept in and didn't get to you know, go out to the mall today or anything like that. It's like you are there for a very finite period of time, even if you are going for, you know, 15, 20, and even 30 days. Yeah. You're still using up way more of your time by missing out yeah, on like, something. When we were there, it the time went by so quickly. And then on one of our days, you know, anything that could go wrong basically went wrong. We, we woke up late because we were in the really cramped Airbnb, which I'll explain later. Ugh. Um, yeah, I, you're probably having like flashbacks right now. We woke up late. We 
so then, and we wanted to go to a place that was like three hours away, I think. So we had to take the bullet train and then the bullet train needed to make a connection. And we didn't know if we were on the right part of the train because it actually detached. And then uh, we saw that we were on the right one, but we had gotten off and we didn't get back on quick enough. So then we had to wait another like half an hour because it was out in a more remote area. And, and then the English when, stops yeah, in it, the remote areas. <laughs> exactly. So that was very difficult. Um, and then when we finally got there, we needed to have our international driver's licenses and we didn't have them because I, in the morning time had scrambled to put my backpack together and I had taken the folder that they were in out of there and didn't place it back in. So that, you know, that was like, a, you know, kind of a, like a regret and... You that know, night it just was, made us really sad because we yeah. missed out on something we wanted to really do, which was check out the Fox Village, which we are definitely putting back on the list this time. And we also know to now we got to if we want to do that trip, we have to wake up at like six or six thirty in the morning. We can't roll out of bed late. Yeah. If we're late, we have to change it to another day. Yeah. So. If you're going over 400 miles, get out of the house at six in the morning. Yeah. It doesn't matter <laughs> If your thing is at 7 o'clock in the afternoon, because trust me, even if you get there five hours early, there is always stuff to do. Mm -hmm. Get out of the house early. Yeah. I mean, also, I was... not in Japan just to hang out yeah. in the house. I was severely jet lagged the entire time. I just, like, could not acclimate to it. Because, you know, I wake up early for work, and I just could not, for the life of me, wake up that same it's kind, kind of, of time. I didn't have that much trouble with the jet lag. Like it just really it messed me up because like well also you slept more on the plane when we went there than I did. I was just so nervous I could not sleep. <laughs> yeah, I you know. <laughs> well, the keep yeah. in mind this plane trip's going to be about fourteen hours long or no, so. Like fifteen hours. Yeah, it, negligible. Anyway, oh, so the whole thing it. with that is that, you know, you got to understand as soon as that plane takes off, let go of all control <laughs> and you will feel a lot better oh, about no. the trip. <laughs> Sorry, it's a reality. Yeah. Stuff okay, so sometimes. the first time we flew out of New York, so we had to drive there. I think the, the plane departed at like noon, which wasn't too bad, but we knew, you know, you got to be there at like 10 a.m. at the earliest. So then we left the house, I think, at six six maybe seven so it only takes like an hour and a half from where i was living at the time to get to new york and that includes traffic and stuff like that but you know you can't risk it for that kind of stuff uh so you know we were already awake for many hours and then to go on the plane that's flying from new york over top of the arctic circle down through russia literally flying over North Korea to go to China because we took Air China and it was to Beijing. And then flying back over North Korea yeah. again to get to Japan. Yeah, so that whole entire experience was just very stressful as a person that has never flown outside of the country before and has only been on a plane twice in that before then. One to California when I was like four, so I don't even remember it. And then the other one was my senior trip to Florida. So that's like, what, a three-hour flight maybe? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. I think I think people out there can understand, you know. It Yeah, it's tough. Okay. Oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> well yeah. said, Eve. Yes, okay. Yeah, I know we're, we're kind of like rambling, but it's mostly because when we normally do this, we have to condense everything down into like an hour's talk. So this is kind of like the first time we actually really get to like say like every little detail other than like, you know, when we just talk to our friends or whoever else in person. But yeah, so like I've, hopefully you guys appreciate it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and also another thing, you guys probably saw the annotation that now that I think about it uh, is going to be right in the beginning of the video. And it's going to prompt you to go down and check out some of the... We'll split this up into chapters, like, in if the actual thing. Yeah. And we'll just use the marks. So if you're more interested in, like, you know, the financial aspect, you can click on that. You know, okay. if you, if you yeah. want to watch the whole video, go ahead. I mean, once again, we're not sponsored. We're not counting views or anything like that. We don't care if you ding the like button and then, you know, do all that stuff. If you want to, great. But if not, you're good anyway. Yeah. We just appreciate you guys having the enthusiasm and wanting to check out the video in the first place. Okay, so when we first went, which we explained was around Halloween time, mm -hmm. and for 10 days total, um, 
Halloween is considered the off season. So the, you know, obviously people travel to Japan in the summertime, also in April to check out the cherry blossoms. And then also in December, cause you know, Christmas has gotten very big over there and it's really nice to see oh, like, yeah. the, the snow and stuff like that. Speaking of, as soon as it was, as it was November 1st, you better believe that they tore down every single hollow Halloween decoration and put all like the Christmas lights and oh, the that Santa was, stuff. That was nuts. Like, <laughs> Because we went into, like, it was, like, a mall or something like that. And we went in, like, yeah. before Halloween. And it was, like, literally 24 hours later, we went back in and it was yeah. all christmas stuff. Yeah, like, like a huge tree in the middle, already lit, already with decorations. It was nuts. So, you know, I guess people say, like, oh, you think it's bad here. People have the Halloween <laughs> or the real. Christmas decorations out in, like, you know, October now. It's like, no, man, it's, like, way worse. <laughs> Okay, yeah, and also Halloween has gotten a lot bigger there, too, so that's just another side, so, um, uh, yeah, okay. Um, so when we first went for those 10 days, we specifically set aside $2,000. This covered our airfare, the rail pass, which we have right here, and we'll explain a little bit more, um, in a bit. The fold and money. Yeah, the room and board, and our meals. Um, so this either may seem like a lot or may seem like a little, depending on your perspective, I would say, because when we, when we say that number to people, people usually have their like jaws on the floor because, you know, if you travel to Disney or to other like resort kind of areas, you'll know that that's, that's a small number. And that was, you know, true grand a person. Um, I would say most families probably spend way more than that on a lot yeah, of kind of trips. Yeah, definitely. And that's like another thing is uh, people imagine international travel and the things along those lines and instantly they think, oh, well, this is going to be so expensive. You know, how could I bring my kid here? How could mm -hmm. I do all this? But um, actually a really good example of that was the uh, people that you were uh, talking to online that wanted to go for their honeymoon. Right. And were right. thinking that it would be like, you know, 10000 between the two of them, which yeah. is like, don't get me wrong. I mean, $4,000 between two people. that 5000 no, 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 what I'm saying. So that would be like $5,000 a person. Yeah. Whereas, you know, we basically told them, well, if you guys play your cards right and do it the right way, you could basically do it for, you know, ha yeah, less than half, basically. Half of what they were expecting. Yeah, basically. and yeah. if they did happen to save that money up and they already considered it spent, then you're also going to Japan walking around with $6,000, and that'll yeah, that's definitely very true. get you through the trip. Exactly. Um, so, um, sorry, I'm trying to think here. <clears throat> So when we say that, you know, like the season matters, that's really also focusing on like, you know, the airline and, and traveling for that reasons, because, uh, you know, the airlines could have kind of more like a proprietary time frame for when they fly out. So like, like I said, we went with Air China. This time when I'm looking at flights, Air China is not even really like on the radar. They're still an airline. Um, you know, pending when this comes out, maybe if you watch this in 10 years, maybe they're not, I don't know, maybe it's called something different in the future, yeah. like, you know, like Pan Am and things like that. But so when we went the first time, it was going to be nine fifty a person. And then we decided to get, um, the capital one venture, venture one card. The one, yeah, the one. Yeah, and this the one's one, the lower level one. The one that you don't pay a yearly fee on. Yeah, and we'll provide a link for this in the uh, description or a pinned comment or something along oh, those Oh, like, things. I kind of want to, like, put my personal link because then I get $100, but I don't know if I should do that. No, they'll <laughs> actually block the link for that. True. Because so, that would also count as a sponsor, technically. Oh, I guess so. But, I mean, we'll it's, it's my related out. thing. Yeah, it's fine. Okay. Yeah. So... We use the Capital One Venture One card, which is the one that does not have a yearly fee. Because if you spent one grand within the first three months of getting that card, you got a bonus 30, 35,000, mm. something. Yeah, it was like 35,000 miles. Yeah, something like that. Which equates to um, every thousand miles is like a dollar or every thousand miles is like ten dollars i can't really remember all i know is that it was 950 per person 
and it was, which included one carry-on and two check bags. We both used all the miles we had saved from both using the cards, and it got the tickets down to two sixty a person. Mm-hmm. So, you know, and that was round six hundred and ninety dollars off of your ticket price is pretty good. Yeah, and that's round trip exactly. Um, so, how I found out about that price in the first place though is I used kayak, cheapo air. Um, you know, any of the, like, comparison ones, because that's, what's nice about that, uh, is you could set up price alerts, and then it'll let you know if things are cheaper. So, to update it for our 2020 trip, um, I used Hopper, which is an app on iPhone, could be on Android, probably is, not entirely sure. So, I set a price alert for the range of the time that we want to go, and the cheapest one I found was $600 per person, because this time it's through, I want to say, American yeah. Airlines, and they have an affiliate, like, international one. It's still American Airlines, but it might be, you know, a plane that flies under a different call sign when it's international. I don't really remember. But, like, that's already way cheaper. And, you know, that's something to look for. <laughs> Essentially, what we're saying is that we're not paying anything for our tickets yeah. because of our frequent We're going to be using our frequent miles. flyer miles again since we've already accrued them. For the past three years. Uh, the thing to note, though, is you kind of need to, like, set these, you know, price reminders. We haven't gotten the tickets yet. I know that they're going to be available for 600 but in the meantime, before then, it prices can fluctuate because they'll either, like, release more tickets or more will be bought up and then it makes it look like they're scarce. You know, things like that. Um, but, yeah, so just definitely look around. Don't immediately pay the one price you see just because you think, oh, there can't be anything better. There's usually better prices out there. Yeah. And then also, if you're going in a big group, you could usually get a discount from the airline. Big group meaning like 10 or more people, though. Yeah. So the best thing for that is to find what kind of flight you're looking for and then call the airline and see if they have a discount. Yeah, exactly. And also another thing with Hopper, too, is they have uh, like uh, kind of a thing under the price that'll say like, Oh, we expect this price to go down to this much, and I think yeah. the last price we saw was like five thirty or something like that. Um, I can't check it. It, it was in the five no five eighty. Yeah. It was five eighty. So it was going to drop so about even twenty cheaper. bucks. Yeah. So that it's literally just a waiting game. You just be patient. Yeah, you just as long as you get your flight uh, before one month of when you're going to leave. Because then in that last month, that's when it's like, oh, oh, here's all the last minute tickets and like everyone's, you know, scrounging to buy them. But before then, it should be fine. Um, yeah, so then we also talked about how we did an Airbnb. The first Airbnb we stayed at was awesome. It was, um, I want to say overall, we spent about 250 a person for lodging. Yeah. So yeah. that includes so that like, includes two Airbnbs and then one kind of like emergency hotel we had to go to, um, <laughs> because of like what happened at the second Airbnb and then us realizing, hey, if we don't go over to Narita where our flight is departing because it's not departing out of the same airport in Tokyo, we're not going to be able to make it over there unless we pay three hundred dollars for like bullet train tickets the day of. Yeah. And that would be way too crazy. Trying to or roll like a thousand dollars for a taxi. Yeah, or we'd have to like cancel that flight and like get another one or something like that. That would have been way too much. We didn't want to have to do that. Um, yeah, so we went the Airbnb route, and then even having to get the hotel for one night. Yeah, like one night. I thought we stayed in there for two nights. I don't yeah, really because remember. we decided to go a little bit early because we're like, oh, true, hey, true. our rail true pass is starting to run out. I know we're in line for this fake cafe, but we right. need to like book it. So it's literally. Yeah, that's true. I could actually tell you, I, I remember it now. I kind of blocked it from my memory <laughs> a little bit. So we got from where we were in Akihabara. Akihabara back to our Airbnb thing. And I literally said, listen, we now have 45 minutes from the time we get to the into our room all the way to the like train station to get our stuff packed get all our things together clean the room up and leave this place and get to our train we have about 45 minutes or else we're done basically like we would have been really 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 not in good shape if that would have happened so that's something that everyone should avoid because that is the type of, uh, you, like, that was almost like what I would call a traumatic experience. <laughs> <It's>, 
Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, you know, just make sure you review the pictures that are posted on there. If it was one person, it would have been not as bad on that second Airbnb. I, I think I have a picture later on that you guys could, you could just scroll through the PDF at your, you know, your leisure. But it was a bunk bed and a desk and then also, I think, like a mini fridge. But how the pictures were taken... It was strategically made to look like the room was bigger. We were basically in a closet. And then we found out that it was probably also like an illegal hostel or It was like thing. illegal tenement housing because... So I'll just say this right now. The people that uh, ran this one had signs up everywhere saying, Oh, don't speak your native language to anyone in this house. So naturally, I go up to the roof to decompress for a little bit. And there's a dude up there. It turns out he's an Italian guy, like from actual Italy, not like <laughs> Jersey Shore Italian. Yeah. But I'm talking to him and I say like, Oh, yeah, why are you... You hear he's like oh i'm here for the next year to work and i'm thinking <laughs> oh okay i see how this whole work thing works out so yeah. yeah that whole thing happened not to mention like the person that was running it like was said that they were one person but the only person that we saw the entire time that was there to like clean and do other stuff was this guy like the person that we dealt with was a girl the whole time and mm -hmm. it was this guy so it kind of just made me wonder if they you know, like if it was him and he was just using a different persona just in case the place got raided or, you know. Yeah, having a different name or something. Exactly. It was, it was very strange and, yeah, not a good time. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, make sure you're checking the accommodations and, like, try and see if there's as many reviews as possible. And, you know, factor in how, you know, the sleeping situation is going to be and how many people you have going. All that stuff. Um, but yeah, so like when we got the hotel in Narita, that was, you know, it's just a generic hotel. It would be like, um, I think a Best Western or something like that. It was a Hilton, I think. No, it wasn't. Are you sure? Um, it was like yeah. a high rise though. It was, it was a pretty The Hilton nice was place. across the street. Yes, you're it right. It was a way bigger building. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, you're right. No, the hotel was nice. It's just like, it's just a hotel though. It's not anything crazy we weren't we weren't trying to find anything crazy because we were literally just trying to basically move our stuff from one location to another and to be able to move or to get transportation to the airport so that was nice the hotel had um a bus service that was free and it was yeah. you know and then we also saw like this very small lady hoist our incredibly heavy bags on her own onto the bus it was a sight to behold. Yeah, exactly. Oh, also <laughs> another thing. If you do end up in a hotel at some point, and it is a high-rise, uh, something that will be a little bit of a culture shock to you is that the uh, windows open in high-rise hotels. Like, I, I was really surprised by this. <laughs> so, like, you're going to walk down the hall, and you're just going to feel air currents coming from under the doors, mm -hmm. and it's going to sound like the building's falling pretty much 24 hours a day. <laughs> Get used to it now, because it really freaked me out at night sometimes. Wow, I don't even remember that being you don't an remember issue. that part no i remember you were able to open the window and you're like huh yeah basically like you would not expect that in any in any building that's above like three stories yeah meanwhile usually... we're like 25 floors up and mm -hmm. yeah yeah okay and then another thing to keep in mind is you need to get your you know your currency exchange. You can use a credit card almost the whole time, but we found a, a bunch of places that you would think would take a credit card, like McDonald's, McDonald's, for instance. And they did, but only, you know, like local credit cards. Um, there's a new thing, though. Uh, it's called Passmo, which is through the JR line where you could actually, like, load money onto it, and it basically is like you have your own Japanese credit card. So, you know, we could look more into that and put some links for that. Um, but we exchange our money ahead of time at the bank um, because you don't want to wait last minute to do it at the airport or even when you get there. There are exchange yeah, places. Yeah, and they, they get, will destroy yeah, you with their exchange rates. You're going to get hit with so many, so many fees for their exchange rates, too. So our recommendation is just... TD and, Bank's a good yeah, one to do Yeah, try and get it. it done at your local bank. Most banks do that. Yeah, exactly. But see, the funny thing is, like, I just used TD Bank because the only reason I had an account is because I didn't want to pay for Coinstar anymore. Yeah. So then I ended up the using that just because of, you know, like, also the rate was much better if you yeah. have an account. So then them. another thing to remember is 
I don't know if this is true at every single bank, but when we tried to change all of our money back that we had left over, they would not accept coins. So we have like a, a bunch little, of like one and five hundred yen of, coins. Yeah, we have like a little glass of coins, and like you know, five hundred yen coins. That's almost like a like five dollars. So, yeah. So you would think, oh well, you know that that's a bigger amount. We should be able to change it back. Nope. Oh yeah. Yeah. There's also you know, five hundred yen's the most, right? Not, yeah. There's no thousand yen coin. No, because that would just be a bill. Yeah. I think. Yeah. That's yeah. a small yeah, 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 right. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, and then of course, you know, factor in your head, like what the exchange rate is when you're there. So when we were looking at certain items, I would see a hundred yen and I basically equate that. Oh, that's like 90 it's, cents. I would say it's a dollar. It's, I yeah, just it's made the easiest it easier way is myself. just, you know, remove two of the zeros it's like a dollar. But then, no, but then what, how I figure it for myself is like, oh, well, this item is like kind of cheap, but it's less than a dollar if you think about it like that. <laughs> you know, that's just my personal yeah. thing. And also another thing is like all the like small coins that you save and stuff, like instead of like just trying to like change them up and like <clears throat> spend them, I would just save it for a few uh Hit visit the a sh no visit oh. a shrine or anything like oh, that yeah, or like a vending true. machine or something along those lines because then you're not changing money just to participate in an experience yeah that's true okay so um as i mentioned before excuse me we got the japan rail pass it's for good for the jr line what's nice is um you get this little map in here but you know we have. We'll technology. take a better picture for you. I'm sure I can you guys include can't a link to that. that. We have technology. You could just look this map up online. So this covers all of Japan. You can actually get localized ones, and it'll be called like JR East, JR West. If you know you're only staying in one spot, it's probably better to just get that because it's a little bit cheaper. Maybe by like fifty to a hundred dollars. Um, there's three different versions. There's a seven day, a fourteen day, and a 21 day so we are going to get the 21 day one of the days we're not going to obviously use it but you know it's better to just get that instead of the 14 day and then on those six extra days have to figure out you know money and stuff oh, yeah. for for uh transportation so when you get your uh rail pass you bring it the, the first day you want to use it you bring it to this little booth that said every single uh, JR line uh, train station and bus stations too. There's a couple of buses you could take. So, and then they put this like little um, little pass thing on there and then you can see that he stamped it and it started on the 28th and it tells you the exact day when this expires. So when you go into the train station, you literally just flash this and then they, you know, walk you through the... Um, it's very easy. Yeah. It's a very simple process. Uh, yeah, okay, so then also you could rent a car if you wanted to. So, um, I don't that. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't know if I fully recommend that to do that the entire time. Because not only is renting a car usually kind of expensive. It's not necessary, really. Yeah, like the public transportation is so, like, perfected there. You might as well just take the train. Um, but if you, for some reason, do need to take... Um, a car, a rental car, you have to get an international driver's license. You can't just bring your New Jersey state license and yeah. then flash it in front you of them. You do need that too, though. But yeah, you do need proof of a license and you need that. But you can't get a car if you don't have your driver, international driver's permit. Um, but yeah, so like we noticed that gas was kind of expensive too. So that's another reason why it's better to just take public transportation because it's actually nice and accommodating. So, um, another great thing about the rail pass is there's a bunch of Shinkansens, which are the bullet trains, that are included in this. A one-way ticket from Tokyo to Kyoto was $150. That was one person, one way. So, the rail pass literally paid for itself with that first back-and-forth trip. Um, so, once again, we'll put the link in there, and then you guys can look and see what pass is best for you. Um, some people say, like, oh, yeah, just pay for, the, like, the local subways or whatever. Yeah, do not do I, that. I wouldn't recommend that just because this is more, it opens up more options, and then you also don't have to worry about paying for something every single time. There also is, you know, that Passmo card that I was talking about that you can load rides onto, but this is just, you know, so much simpler. It's, you know, one yeah. of those things. And then also, 
uh, when you're keeping stuff on your person, you know, sometimes people say don't bring your passport with you, depending on what country it is. 100% you need your passport on you because in case for some reason, you know, that someone asks you something like an official or something or a police officer or, you know, a trained person, you need to be able to show that. And if you say, oh, I left it in my room, you could probably get away with it. But if you see that keep on happening, you know. That's a sign. Yeah, just have it with you. And also another thing to uh, consider with the uh, JR passes is that this is something that you have to order outside of the country. Yes. You cannot have, you know, you can't get your fear of missing out once you get to the country and order these. It's not going to happen. These are not for Japanese nationals. They're just for visitors. And that's why they, you know want people to have this type of thing. It's yeah. it's a lot better. It's a lot easier. They know that their rail system is expensive, but they also know it's worth it. So that's why they want, they would rather people get these. Yeah, because like uh, local people can get different passes. Just like uh, if you're from like South Jersey, Philly area, you would know about like SEPTA, Amtrak. There's little cards that you get. Oh, Metro Pass for, yeah. for like uh, New York and stuff like that. It's the same concept. So they have their own thing, and then foreigners have to get another thing. So this is very convenient. Highly recommend it. Um, the seven-day pass, it even tells you how much on the back it was. It was 29,110 yen, which equates to around, like, $290. I think it was actually less than that. Um, but, yeah, like, you will give you the link to, for where you can order it. And then also the same website that sells these, and it's an official website, they also sell SIM cards, which I'm definitely going to get this time because um, uh, we talk about this later, but, you know, having pocket Wi-Fi, it's very good. Definitely get an Airbnb that has pocket Wi-Fi included in it. So then you could, you know, have everyone's devices on that because not every single mobile provider has uh, equivalent service in Japan without, like, exorbitant fees. Luckily, Brandon's carrier... T-Mobile. Like, T-Mobile... free... The free, uh, yeah, exactly. So the stuff. whole thing with that is that the data was a little bit slow, but it was unlimited. Uh, calls would have been like ten cents a minute, but it's free texting, unlimited data. Um, so if you have T-Mobile, just go to your store and they'll be able to tell you if you have that. Um, also, another thing we forgot to mention about the uh, the international driving permits oh. with this, uh, you could get these at your local AAA. That's probably the best place to get. Them. Yeah. Also, it only lasts for a year, I think. Yeah. Right? they yeah, that's, that's those are no good now. Well, yeah, I don't remember. Um, yeah, valid for one year from, and then they put like the date like the date right before you were going to go and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, uh, what was I going to say? Oh, also like, you know, notify your banks and stuff like that, that you're traveling internationally. That's just kind of like one of those things, you know, you want to make sure that if there's any issues, like if say, say they lock out your card or something like that while you're there and you don't have any cash on you. Yeah, that's, that is. So I that's actually, something, that's one, the... one time my card did get declined and I had literally used it for like three days by then it got declined i just had a paying cash and then later in the day i tried it again and it worked and there was no notification on like capital one or anything like that it was just a weird occurrence well that's the funny thing is i actually had to tell my bank that i was doing that because i didn't use my debit card very often in japan but i did have to use it at Ooh. one point but i told my bank and i said hey i'm going to be traveling and they said all right sign these papers so mm -hmm. that we know what you're doing so they knew where i would yeah, be on, and everything actually on the that. capital one card um normally you don't have a pin with a credit card obviously you yeah. only have pins for debit cards or atm cards but when we notified they're in the app you say like oh i'm traveling internationally it actually makes you set up a pin because there were a couple of times where i actually had to type that in mm -hmm. even though i'm using it as like a credit transaction so you know those are just like little things but if you if like traveling anywhere outside of the country that's probably something that you would have to deal with um yeah so then like we said when we got into japan it was almost midnight no trains are running you would think with how, you know, brightly lit stuff is still in the city that there'd be more, you know, public transportation going on. Like how you could literally catch a subway at any time of the day in New York. Not the same. It will shut down at like 1135. Like on the dot. Yeah. So 
if you it's a very really punctual country. Yeah, if you really needed to take that train, you're gonna have to sit in that station until six a.m. when they start back up, or you're gonna have to take a bus, uh, provided it's still running at that time, or you're gonna have to get a taxi. And we were there; they had Uber, so we did that one time. Um, maybe by then they'll have Lyft. I don't. I don't know. Probably not. But you know, that's uh. <laughs> You know, it's one of those things where you really got to, like, keep track of your time when it comes to transportation. And then, like Brandon said, when you get more outside of, like, the hustle and bustle of the city, there's a lot less English um, for for things. Although, I think when we go back, I think even in, like, kind of the remote towns, they're probably going to have a little bit more English and maybe even other languages like Spanish, French... You know, just because of the Olympics and stuff like that. Yeah, exactly. They're going to be catering to a lot of foreigners. I mean, but that's also part of the reason that we decided to push our trip ahead a little bit. Just because of the specific fact that, like, you know, the country is going to be inundated with people. Yeah, and we want to go for, you know, like, Japanese culture, not random other countries. I mean, the rest of the world's (laughs) neat, too, but that's not why we're there. One step at a time, I suppose. Yeah, so, um, when we packed for this, that first trip, we definitely overpacked, and I personally packed way too many costumes, because I was like, oh, well, it's Halloween, I'm gonna want to do cosplay. That was not a good idea, I should've just picked one costume and stuck with it. But no, I got excited, and I wanted to bring tons of stuff. Tried to warn her. Yeah, so, our luggage was already heavy, um... We had a little bit of space left, but it was not a lot to, uh, you know, be able to bring back the the items that we bought plus the clothes that we already had. So we had to ship that stuff back at our expense, and that was... It was over 100 It was like, it was like 150 one, bucks, It was like 150 because yeah. we had to do one box that cost 100 and then another box that cost 50 And when we got one of the boxes back, the bottom was completely ripped and... I think everything was still in there, but I don't even really know. I knew all my clothes were, but I think we had bought some, like, books and stuff, and who knows if that slipped out. Yeah. But, yeah, so, you know, definitely keep that in mind. Uh, Definitely bring the... Oh, sorry. Well, let me just get the (laughs) file. Definitely bring rolly backpacks that have four wheels. You want to be able to, you know, maneuver in the airport, in the train station, all that stuff. It, when we first went, we had two backpacks with four wheels and then two or uh, suitcases, suitcases and then two that had like the little nubby things and then two wheels behind that. So there are some places where there are not any elevators and then there's places where there's escalators, but the, the little platform is very, very small. So I literally had to have one suitcase in front of me, me, and then one behind me, and I was like, hold it on for dear life, because I literally fell down one, and then now I have PTSD about it. It was terrifying, because those suitcases were so heavy, I felt like I was just gonna get trapped in the bottom part of the escalator. <laughs> Ugh, it was so annoying. Yeah, it was yeah, pretty so, bad. So then, well, we also thought, like, oh, you know, we're gonna need heavier clothes, because it's, like, getting into the cooler months and stuff like that. We probably didn't need to bring as many, like, pants and things like that. But what's nice is, since we're going in the summertime, we're just shorts, maybe like one or two pairs of pants, and then we're also going to go to the laundromat and actually do our laundry this time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And all that stuff isn't too bad. Um, yeah, really, the the biggest problem, like Eve said, was just bringing too many clothes, because the funny thing is, like, you know, I thought I was pretty conservative with it, and we thought we were being smart by using... Uh, um, vacuum seal bags, but the funny thing with that is that those vacuum seal bags decompressed on the plane anyway, so yeah. it didn't really even matter that much. Yeah. I mean, we're going to use them again, but this time, you know, More honestly, to keep things, like settled yeah. for this twenty days. I honestly feel like you know five pairs of shorts, maybe like ten shirts or so, yeah, as, and then just socks. Well, I was going to say it. Basically, we're going to probably underwear. yeah, we're probably going to pack for like five days worth, and then you know we could just clean that stuff. Instead of maybe like five to seven days worth, so that it's switched up a little bit. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and then you know, of course, you can buy stuff while you're there. Clothing is a little bit more expensive than what we're used to. You can always go to Uniqlo because that stuff is cheap. It's basically, I would say, it's like equivalent to like an Old Navy. Mm-hmm. How clothes are here. Um, and then like socks and underwear. That was that stuff was cheap at uh, Don Quixote, which is basically their Walmart, which we will <laughs> get into in a couple of. 
couple of slides here. Um, but yeah, so like if you're going in the winter time, you have to factor in that you got to pack heavier. And then another thing is if you're going when it's the rainy season, even in the seasons where it's not supposed to be the rainy season, it still rained like, I want to say like three days straight. And it rained on Halloween, so like that kind of dampered some of the activities we wanted to get into that I was looking up ahead of time. Um, what is nice though is like every single place has umbrellas that you could just borrow. Um, like yeah, it's a hotel big wise, cust- Airbnb wise. It's a big customary umbrellas. thing. They're very nice with the umbrellas. Yeah. So it was always it was always good to have those, and it it really did help a lot. So I mean, I could only assume that it's probably going to rain every other day in the oh, summertime. No. But I know it's just I mean, it's an island. It's yeah. basically like a giant rainforest. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So then, um, also, I'm sure you've seen in like anime and stuff like that, or in you know, in movies, uh, you have to take your shoes off when you go outside of the little atrium in, in people's houses into the actual um, house part. So you don't need to worry about that either because, like I said, that's a known thing, so places will have that stuff for you. I had my slides, my like Adidas slides, so I was able to wear those too in the house. But, you know, if you don't have something like that or you don't feel like packing it, you don't have to, that stuff's going to be provided. I'm, I can say that with like 100% certainty that it'll be there yeah. although it was funny because we fully expected to for that to be like a hard and fast rule that no one violates but our first uh airbnb host was this super cool guy just all around and the first thing he told us was this is my house i don't care if you wear shoes or not yeah <laughs> yeah but i mean you know we're gonna be polite and try and stick to Yeah, of course. I mean, there was rules, not a though. single time that I walked in his house with shoes on. I, just, I think uh, the very first time when we were bringing the stuff upstairs, just because it would have been kind of like a hassle to carry the luggage and then you got to take your shoes off and things like that. Yeah. And it was, yeah, it was fine. So Yeah, exactly. And it was like, you know, it was kind of funny because like how quickly you could actually become like friends with people and stuff because mm-hmm. literally by the second day, you know, like the, you know, the morning ritual was to go down have coffee, you know, go outside, yeah. sit for a little while, that type of stuff. Yeah, so, and like talk yeah. with our host and kind of give him an idea yeah. of what we were doing. And yeah, stuff like he was. That. He was also just like in general a really cool guy. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, we hope yeah. to definitely. Meet. They're not doing their Airbnb anymore, but we hopefully hopefully could definitely meet back up with him. And, like, grab a coffee or something. Yeah, exactly. Or, like, a beer or something. (laughs) Yeah, Hanamaru, if you happen to be watching this, I still owe you that meal from last time because we didn't get to go. Yeah, exactly. I got you this time. Don't worry. (laughs) Yeah, okay. So, I think we've covered, like, kind of all the basics. So, now, let's say we're there and you're starting to get hungry. What do you do for food? Um, So... Brandon, being the picky eater that he is, did not want to go to all the like. I have no idea what you're fishy talking places about. that I would like to go to. Although we we learned that sushi is not as like widespread as you think it is. Like there's plenty plenty of places. Don't get me wrong, but it's not like something you go to all the time. It's more reserved for like you know special occasions. Um, so we looked into you know obviously like the, uh the localized versions of you know chain restaurants that we yeah. have here so like <laughs> you know mcdonald's and there's like uh there was a hooters we saw and i kind of want to go to that next time just because i want to see like what what the difference is if you know what i mean uh. um but one of the cool things that we went to that is you know like a local favorite here some people probably don't like it at all but taco bell we went to one of the only five Taco Bells in the entire country. And what was really cool was they were testing out the nacho fries there. So we got to have them before all you guys. Which Uh is kind of funny because it's like when you think (laughs) of nacho fries, it's like that is not where I think where their test market would be. (laughs) Yeah, it was really cool though. And then um, the girl working there, she was Canadian? Yeah, she was Canadian. Well, see, it was funny because she was clearly half Japanese or fully Japanese and just lived in Canada. So I started trying to order stuff and she was like, oh no, it's fine. I speak English. (laughs) And I was like, thank you. I am so happy right now. Yeah. The refuge that is, or the, yeah, that's a Taco Bell where you can speak a little bit of English. Um, But yeah, so then I also wanted to check out chains that are popular in Japan, like Most Burger and uh, Cocoa House Curry. 
So most Coke burger house, best thing I ate the entire time yeah. I was there. Most burger is basically like a you know it's like a McDonald's, but at the time they had this spaghetti parmesan like chicken sandwich, and I wanted to try that. It was okay. Um, it's <laughs> it's what you would expect because it's spaghetti on a sandwich. It's just kind of weird. But while we were there, Drop there was spaghetti. Yeah, there was um another like couple that were foreigners. Not sure if they were from America, probably, but, you know, they could have been anywhere. Um, and, you know, they did their order and stuff like that, and then sh the lady gets handed a diet soda, but she wanted an iced tea, and she got, like, so mad about it. It's like, you know, as someone who's visiting a country, you gotta, like, be understanding that not everyone speaks the same language. Even if you point at the picture that's, like, on the little mat, they might not have seen what you pointed to. So you can't, like, you know, freak out like that. You know, as we're basically, like, representing where we're from, we don't want to fall into that stereotype that, like, Americans are, like, rude and loud and obnoxious and stuff like that. That's literally, like, the whole, like, <laughs> listen here, Karen. You need to calm down right now. Yeah, exactly. You don't, you don't want to be like that. You don't want to be like that anywhere. It doesn't, you know, not just while you're traveling to Japan. You shouldn't be like that here. <laughs> You gotta, you know, give these people some, you know, leeway. Um, yeah, so then Brandon was talking about Cocoa House. It was super awesome. It was basically, think of it like how Waffle House operates, where there's only, like, two people working, and they, like, get that food out really quick. It was super awesome, and they had an Evangelion campaign going on, and I ordered the meal that was supposed to come with a keychain, but since I didn't have a Japanese version of the Apple Store, I couldn't get the app that was supposed to go with it, and I was really mad about that. So, hopefully when we go back, they have that in, like, the bargain bin at She one of would the shops. not, that, our server would not give up that keychain. Yeah, like, it was <laughs> so annoying. I really wish I knew the Japanese phrase for, I'm big enough to pick you up and carry you out of here, <laughs> give me the keychain. It's like, we bought the food it was on the picture <sighs> okay um composure yes but yeah so definitely check out some smaller stuff too if you have someone that's like local to go with you um so uh you know like our our, our friend, friend kaizu yeah our friend kaizu took us to uh this alleyway that's like really famous behind nakano broadway that has like a whole bunch of yeah I know, that sounded, sounded bad. really bad it's well I, I think some people know that there's basically, like, a set of dive bars will usually be in, like, a very, like, small alleyway. And there will be, like, one right after another. It could fit, like, eight to ten people max. Some of them can only fit, like, two people. But it's just, like, one of those, like, local experiences where you can get, like, cheap food, cheap beer, and you just kind of, like, unwind. And one of the ones that he took us to was, uh, like, Kaiju and, um, uh, what's the... Ultraman. Yeah, I know. What is that called? I want to say tonkatsu, but that's not the right... I don't think that's the right word. But basically, like, tonkatsu the... Tonkatsu is a type Sentai of stuff. Sentai, yeah. I know, but there's something that starts with a T, I think. I'll look it up. I'll put an asterisk or something. But yeah, so it was really cool. It had, like, uh, posters and decorations of all that kind of stuff. And that was something we would not have known about, like, on our own. Because, like, walking by it, I think there was maybe, like, one tiny poster. You wouldn't even know it if you weren't looking for it. Yeah, exactly. And it was just, like, in general, a cool place. They also served something called Japanese pizza, where, like, <laughs> as far as pizza goes, I don't know, but it was good. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, that's, you know, it's like, you're there, you should try as much stuff as yeah. you can. I will say they do serve their beers American style, though, because they are tall and they are pretty wide too so yeah. <laughs> they're also very cold so if you're into that type of thing you're going to the right country yeah <laughs> yeah so then um also check out like convenience stores which are called konbini in japan uh they got 7-eleven which is hugely popular there way more popular than it is here i wish we would kind of have the same things because it's so popular they have their own gundams that are 7-eleven themed and um yeah, that would have been cool if we had that here. Oh, um, yeah, definitely. There's also uh, Lawson, Family Mart. Circle K. Yeah, there is a Circle K. Yeah, there were a couple of those that yeah. I noticed. Um, but, yeah, so what's cool about that is if, if you know what Wawa is, you know that they have, like, the hot food section. So they kind of have something similar to that where they have, like, the hot foods that you could, like, prepare on your own. 
Uh, you don't have to, like, you know, do, like, an order or anything like that. And then they also have, like, a cold section that had, like, sandwiches, all that good stuff. And then another thing to check out is the uh, ticket ramen places. And then if you also come across one of the, like, literally, like, vintage classic ramen carts, definitely check that out, too. But the ticket ramen ones is where you basically are in front of like a big vending machine looking thing and you like pick the type of noodles that you want, the type of meat, type of broth, and it prints out a little ticket and then, you know, they seat you because they're trying to maximize the amount of people that can get it. Yeah, exactly. Stuff. It's also cheap too. I think it was like five bucks a person. Yeah, between and it was five like and eight dollars a person. Huge bowl. It was a huge bowl and also like they so tipping's not really a thing over in Japan. So it's not like the type of thing where it's like, oh okay, you know, it's like ten dollars that I'm gonna be tipping this. No. Everyone that works there is paid very well you know, unlike in, you know, American restaurants where people are making four, sometimes less an hour. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, tipping is like, even That's if you do thing, try though. to tip, more than likely they will, if they see you give it to them, they will not accept it. Or if you leave it there, they will run after you and try to give it back to you because they thought you forgot it. Yeah. <laughs> so that's just the type of thing you don't have to worry about doing that. Don't feel rude or anything. Uh, the best way to show appreciation is to just say thank you, give a friendly bow, that type of thing. Yeah, and like finish all your food and stuff, of course. Too. That too, yes. That is, that's a big thing. Do not leave your food. Yeah. Um, and then we did end up going to a conveyor belt sushi place because, you know, I wanted that experience. Um, and I definitely ate more than I probably should have because it's by the plate and then some plates are more expensive than the others. So next time I definitely would rather just do like an all you can eat sushi because it's like expensive, but it'll be worth it with, you know, the quality and how much you can get. <laughs> and now there's a KFC buffet, so. Yeah, so looking forward to that because KFC is super popular in Japan because Colonel Sanders is like, you know, basically Santa because of the family, <laughs> the family chicken bowls that you, or uh, buckets that you have to pre-order in advance of Christmas. So yeah, they're expensive too. Like, yeah, it's like geez. $50. Uh-huh. <laughs> but it comes with a cake too. Yeah, which Christmas is cake. pretty yeah. awesome. Yeah. So yeah, um, definitely try out as much stuff as you can. This time, since we're going to be there for as long, we definitely want to go to like a supermarket and like get some stuff to prepare since we get like a little mm. kitchenette kind of thing. And you know, there's, um, is there only six of us going? I'm trying to think. There's not eight. Me, you, Mike, Jackie, Barry, Mikey. Yeah, it's only six people, not eight. Yeah, there were two other people, yeah. but yeah. Yeah, okay. Well, what I was going to say is like there's six of us. We know how to cook, so we should take turns in doing that so we can save a little bit of money. You know, you don't want to go out every single day. Like, that's a lot of stuff to go out for. Like, um, we're near, this time we're near Nakano Broadway. So the first time we were near Shinjuku. But this time we have a little bit more of a variety of, like, local, like, convenience stores, supermarkets, and things like that. So I think it'd be good for us to go out and kind of, like, grab things to prepare and, you know kind yeah. of have like more local flavors just because we're making it ourselves and stuff like that i think it'll be fun oh yeah exactly and i'm actually really excited to uh check out uh that we're so close to nakano broadway as well because i think it would be cool to be able to go there like more than once yeah or even just like wander around by myself for a little bit yeah check exactly it out too just to like see how the experience is so and that's the good thing is like uh you know going with more people you know since you're, you know, when you go with two people, it's like, all right, we're not separating this entire time because if we do, one of us will die. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Whereas, that's a little extreme. Okay, a little bit yeah. extreme, but the whole point is that, you know, sometimes you got to experience some things on your own. Sometimes you got to experience it in a group. And yeah, so mm -hmm. that's that's another uh, thing is like, I'm sure that anyone who is going, if you're going with a group, you might get to experience things twice. And I'm sure there'll be a duality, as it were. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Agreed, Brandon. Next. Okay. Yeah. So the next thing we want to talk about is Don Quixote. And this is their little mascot, Don Penn. We adopted him when we were there the first time. Mm -hmm. We will he's... bring him back to his homeland. Yeah, he's <laughs> he's going back to his homeland. That's for sure. Yeah. Um. So, like I said before, it's basically like their version of a Walmart. And I don't know if I would always say that it's always classier because one time we saw this guy stumbling in hella drunk. Yeah. And... <laughs> 
It was funny, but, like, also, if you, like, think about it, it's mm. kind of sad. It was, like, 3 a.m. That's, like, one of the only things that's still open that late. There's bars. Yeah, bars and Don Quixote. Oh, and arcade. Uh, oh, yeah, those things arcade never close. Parlors? Cards, arcade? You could just say arcades. Arcades, yeah. Well, I mean, there's, well, there's also, like, pachinko and stuff like that. That would be a pachinko parlor. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. Or as I like to call it, the uh, airplane hangar. Yeah. <laughs> so loud it's an experience that's for sure i would like to like legitimately try and play again but i don't know if i could deal with that noise again it was so much yeah uh one of the attendants touched my hand to teach me how to play the game yeah because so the reason why it's so loud is it's using um was it like pneumatic like pneumatic air tubes air, yes. yeah and like air guns basically so you turn the knob and that like it changes, opens up the valve. Yeah, it and, changes, like, the pressure applied to the ball. So it's, like, it's mm. you're literally ball hitting against metal and plastic with air coming out. It's, 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 it's funny crazy. because, <laughs> like, the doors are fairly soundproof. So, like, as we're walking, we're like, this is going to be awesome. And the doors open and it's we like, just get hit with a wall of sound. Yeah. But so it's, uh, you know, it is pretty funny and stuff. But I may, uh, you know, pretend I don't know how to play again next time I go. That was fun. <laughs> Wait, do you just want someone to touch your hand? Is Maybe. that all? Yeah, you touch my hand all the time. It okay. doesn't count. Yeah. <laughs> we'll get a guy to help you out this time. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so... It'll oh, it'll be like a thing where the girl's talking to me, and I'm like, oh, I just don't know how to do it. And she's like, oh, hold on one second. Then I turn around, I'm like, yeah. And then all of a sudden, this hand that's, like, bigger than mine. <laughs> <laughs> that would happen to you. Yeah, I know. But yeah, it's like so, a bear or something. Yeah, just a bear. Yeah, they have a trained bear. But yeah, so um, Don Quixote is definitely useful if, like, late at night you need, like, socks or, like, shampoo or something like that. Um, very, very convenient. Yeah, or snacks. Like, yeah, we got, snacks. like, a lot of our snacks from there. So, so the funny thing, though, is, like, the one complaint I have that's not really even a complaint like, the snacks don't always, like, hit the spot. Like, when you just need, like, a bag of American Doritos. They had Doritos, both, No. They didn't have American Doritos. What do you mean? They, there's a difference. Okay. Like, there, there just is. Okay, okay. Okay, yeah. So, we also just talked about Nakano Broadway, and that was, like, probably one of the best, like, shopping places to visit. And we visited that very early in the trip, too, so that, like you know, kind of set the stage for some things. Because how Nakano Broadway is, it has, like, you know, uh, chain stores like Mandrake and, um, uh, I can't really think. There's, you know, like, Daiso's, like, the 100 yen stores, things like that. They have some of those in there. But they also have booths that a... You're like Amy, Amy, like, that's a... I don't no, think that yeah. was there. No? Um, no? Okay. But, yeah, so, like, they have... They have booths, like, you could rent if you are selling at, like, a flea market. So we found, like, this one guy. He had, like, all different kinds of things, like, little, you know, action figures, toys. And then he also had a bin of what's called junk games, which were literally just 100 yen PS1 games that, you know, they're classics. It's like Final Fantasy VII was in there. Um, you know, it's pretty great. <laughs> oh, yeah. But, yeah, like, um, there was also, like, a really cool, like, vinyl toy store so like vinyl toys i think are kind of like more popular there so you might not really see that as much here but not like funko's because it's probably like the same kind of plastic but it's just a little bit of a different quality no they're actual toys yeah, they're not like, just things that are meant to be put up on the like, shelf. they are toys that people have played with at times yeah so um and then another thing to look into is used shops because a used item can mean that the box was opened and then the item was, like, left in there and never used. And it'll still be ch way cheaper than, like, a new item. Like or pennies even, on the dollar. Yeah, or even trying to import it from, you know, America to Japan. And it'll be just, like, a broken, like, action figure. So, you know, definitely look at the prices. Compare that stuff. Like, there are some things where if it's, like, a Gundam, I usually look at how much is it online? What's the size of the box? Because then that, you know, changes kind of, like, the import fees on it. And, you know, you can get... You can get the... The ginormous, perfect grades. The ones that are so big they have to have a carrying handle 
for like $150. Yeah, exactly. Or like, you know, some of the older ones. Like uh, back in the day, I loved Gundam action figures, and I used to buy them from the local Blockbuster, believe it or not. And I, uh, we went into this one store, and they had a bunch of secondhand ones, and they were like, you know, five dollars, ten dollars mm-hmm. for the actual Gundam action figures. So yeah. I thought that was awesome. As I'm actually looking at my burning Gundam up on the shelf behind the camera, yeah, <laughs> it really brings back memories. You're definitely gonna want to bring a lot of stuff back because, like, every time you come across something, you're gonna remember your trip, and that really yeah, exactly. does make it worth it. You know, the little mm-hmm. bit of extra money or extra trouble that you go through to get it back yeah and then um you know surprisingly you would think that video games in general would be cheap but we saw that the latest generation that stuff's actually more expensive than our versions of it so you know once again you want to see if there's like used copies available or um you know look just look for the retro stuff they even had import games i.e like our versions of like fallout doom um, you know, like FIFA games, Madden, things like that. Like, it was literally, like, the actual American version, which, uh, if you have, like, a PS4 or a Switch, you could play that region-free anyway. I don't know if Xbox is region-free, but there's also not that many Microsoft things over there to begin with. Yeah, but they were the most expensive, though. Well, yeah, because because it wasn't as popular, so then now there's a lot of collectors over there looking for that stuff. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, and then also in the bottom of Nakano Broadway is a famous ice cream place called uh, Daily Chico. And it's when, pretty awesome. When you it go there, good ice cream. When you go there, they like you know they do the classic like big scoops and stuff like that. And they have like a wall of celebrities that have gone down there. I think Tom Cruise was one of them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There was like Tom Cruise. Uh, <laughs> Maybe they'll like, have a couple, now. a bunch of Asian celebrities and stuff like uh, K-pop people. Yeah. Uh, a couple Chinese movie stars as well. You know, Japanese people, of course, of course. have yeah. to stop by there. But yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, we we actually want to try to see if we can convince them that our friend Barry is a basketball player because he's like six foot eight. So yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that'll be fun. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Yeah, so then, um, you know, if you're looking for, like, the classic, like, Power Rangers, aka Super Sentai series, you're going to be able to find it, and you're going to be able to find the original versions before they had their name changed to Mighty Morphin Power Rangers and all that good stuff. So definitely make sure you save some room in your luggage. This time, we're literally condensing all of our clothes down into like the smallest amount possible and leaving the rest of the luggage open for just bringing stuff back. Mm-hmm. Because there was like so much stuff that I wanted. I knew we couldn't bring it. Like I missed an opportunity of a, a boxed um, version of the GameCube. That's oh, the, the, tiger, the, the Henshin Tiger Team mm. one that comes with the jersey, and it was nice and complete in box, and it was pretty cheap compared to what you would pay for it on eBay for that same quality. So, you know, I definitely want to be able to, you know, take advantage of being able to find stuff hey, maybe in Maybe it's still there. Maybe. It's a uh, possibility. We'll check the same I mean. place. I remember exactly which store it was in Akihabara, which if you've ever played Akiba's Trip, it is faithfully recreated, so I would highly recommend playing that game yeah use it as a uh you know <laughs> and then you could play uh the world ends with you for uh yeah that's Shinjuku, right yeah, they've, yeah. they've got the scramble there no that's shibuya shibuya yeah shibuya they've got the crossing, scramble in there right. yeah um but yeah like if you if you played some of those kinds of games it it's definitely like really faithfully created um yeah, so then when we were in Akihabara, we checked out the official Sega arcade, which is like six stories of different types of Sega games. So they have a floor that's like just like Gachapon, a floor that's just uh, UFO claw machines, oh, yeah. one that's just for rhythm games, all the different kinds of rhythm games. And then they had one for the fighting games and the, all that good stuff. It was a lot of fun. Definitely want to check that out again. Um, and then we also went to a place called Card Kingdom, which had magic cards. So we it's see... It's funny, because Card Kingdom's actually a thing online now, so I'm wondering yeah. if it's the same kind of... Just kind of like uh, Hararuya as well. I think it might just be the same kind of name. The mm-hmm. Hararuya stuff, that's... That's different. That's that was like actually an actual... a Japanese company, yeah. though. Yeah. And they're, they apparently have a warehouse in Delaware for some reason. Yeah, probably, probably the cheap, tax. Cheap shipping you know. and yeah. tax stuff. But yeah, so like... Um, if you play Magic, you, you'll you see that you can get, like, you know, Japanese versions of the trading cards. Same with, like, Russian text, Chinese text, uh, French, Spanish, 
Cetera, Don't expect a deal, though. It's The exactly. prices are about the same as exactly. they are here. So I thought that was kind of funny because normally an import card would be more expensive here, and then it's like, oh, well, we're actually there. And then it's like the English ones were usually cheaper than the Japanese Yeah, versions. exactly. It's kind of funny. Yeah, we were also hoping to be able to like play like an F&M or something like that. And despite its popularity, apparently online, not that many places hold tournaments like that well, that's but they the, have a national team so i don't know maybe we were just looking in the wrong i places. am pretty sure there is probably a small place where people uh you know probably play magic a lot in japan but i don't think it is the, for how many japanese players have made it to world championships yeah, exactly. pro tour stuff like that i don't think it's as popular as wizards of the coast would like people to think it is yeah exactly sorry wizards but <laughs> i'm really not at the same time <laughs> yeah um, okay, so then we went to Shibuya, and we checked out kind of like the more like hip stuff, because that's kind of what it's considered. <laughs> so we checked out the Tokyo Mall, and that one had a pet store on top, so that was kind of cool to see. Yeah, pets are expensive yeah. in Japan. But like, it, was kind of, it was cool to see what stuff they had. Yeah, they, they keep their cages really clean, and the animals are clearly very healthy and happy, so yeah. I did like seeing that. Yeah, and then we also went to HMV Records, which had like tons of like rock, pop, and hip-hop stuff. So um, in the little PowerPoint, I took a picture of a Linkin Park CD. It is one that comes with a concert Hybrid TV. Hybrid theory, right? Yeah, it's... Yeah, it's the one with the mecha on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it is the one that comes with the concert DVD, but it was 4,500 yen, which is like $45. If you think about that, like here, it's probably like five bucks or something like that. Yeah, which is funny because on the flip side, I bought the, uh, you know, Japanese release. And of course, this is a Japanese band and not, I don't know if a lot of people know who they are. But uh, Mad Capsule Markets, which was like, you know, it's funny because I found them on YouTube like years ago. And it's another one of those Japanese bands that I just could never find them mm -hmm. after I found them the first time. And it was like the special edition album. And it was like four dollars. Yeah. 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 And I found December Underground for. You actually like, bought that, too. I did you? buy that. Yeah, yes. exactly. I was very excited about that. It was like. I want to say it was like 100, maybe 200 yen. Yeah. Because it was in like the discount used section. So it's like, yeah, definitely getting this. Music that was never popular mm. section. You don't know. It, hey. had a, it had an exclusive Japanese interview on it, though. So that was cool. Um, yeah, so then we also wanted to check out Odaiba. We didn't get a chance to go there. That's where the Gundam base is, if you've ever seen the picture of the, like, one, one, one scale, scale Gundam. Gundam. Yeah, so before it was uh, RX-78-2, which is, you know, your classic Gundam. Now it's uh, Unicorn Gundam, and I think they just changed it to, like, Berserk Mode Gundam. Nice. Like, Berserk Unicorn Gundam. Um, yeah. They need to do the Australian I'm, Red Frame. I'm sure they're going to be passing by that for the Olympic Torch uh, yeah. Relay. I would doubt that, you know, that they wouldn't want to miss that kind of thing. Um, yeah, there's also a tiny version of the Statue of Liberty over there, so I definitely want to check that out. And then another kind of interesting thing is if you guys know Love Park in Philly, that, um, fixture was actually on loan to Japan in, um... When we were there. Yeah, in Shinjuku while we were there. It was right near where the Evangelion Pachinko Parlor was. And I was like, oh, that's interesting. They have their own version of it. So then I looked online and I was like, oh, no, that's like the that's same like, real yeah, that's one. That's the sign. Yeah, well, there's other versions of it, too. But that particular one with that, like, coloration was the exact same one from Philly. We should have, like, signed it or something and then took a picture <laughs> no. when it was back in Philly. No, you don't want to deface art like that. I took a picture of it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I just thought that that was funny. Um, <clears throat> so next we will be talking about sightseeing because this is like the kind of cultural part that you want to get into. So obviously, you know, check out Mount Fuji. This time we plan on climbing Mount Fuji and we're going to take the precautions. Oh, we and, do it. And we're going to, you know, at, take at least two days to do the, you know, up and down trek. Um, but... It, you could basically see it from anywhere when you're on a train. Not inside of the city, but, like, you know, when you're traveling across the country and stuff like that. So you should definitely, you know, check it out if you can. Um, you can't see, climb it. It just doesn't look that hard in the picture. Yeah. Sorry to cut you yeah. off, but it just doesn't look, look that there's hard. Look, no, there's no snow on the top either, and it's kind of funny because that's in October. Yeah, exactly. Um, 
Yeah, they don't let you climb it all year, though. I think you can, but you have to be, like, super-duper experienced. I was going to say, yeah, I feel like it's the type of thing where they're not going to stop you, but they're not yeah. going to suggest yeah, yeah, yeah. it either. Yeah, and then um, we also didn't get a chance to do Tokyo Tower, because that's, you know, like, one of those touristy things. So a lot of places will say, like, oh, avoid it, because it's really touristy. We got to see it, of course, and we saw it from, like, you know, different places in the city. But I'd actually like to take the time to, like, go up there. Because, you know, it's, like, one of those classic... Things you things see that in, Godzilla has destroyed. Exactly type of that you see in Toho movies and you see in anime where it's someone's like professing their love to somebody on there. Or oh something. yeah, yeah. It's like first of all, no, because there was a line of tourists and you would have never gotten up yeah. there. Yeah, it's like this is unrealistic. There's only two people in the background. Um, we did get to go to Toho Cinema, which is in awesome. um, Shinjuku, I believe. Yeah. That's where the um, hotel is, too. So that's where you can see, like, Godzilla peering over, and then, like, he... I think smoke comes out every every couple of hours yeah. and stuff like that. Say what you will about the Japanese, but they are not what I would call subtle on most things. <laughs> that's for sure. So what's really cool, though, is when we go back, the fourth Evangelion movie is going to be premiering. And I definitely want to go to Toho Cinemas to see it, because I want to get one of those uh, lobby books which I know are going to be super hard to find. And I don't care if I can't understand anything, and I know there's no subtitles, but I am watching that movie. People are going to hate Barry in that theater. Because he's so tall. Mm -hmm. I'll have to sit in the back. <laughs> um, but yeah, so another thing to like consider is like take the time to check out like some temples if you see them nearby. Um, where we were staying, there was the... Uh, oh, what was that park? I'd have to look on, like, the, on, like, Google and stuff like that. Uh, you're but talking was... about that park that just popped up in front of us, right? Yeah, we were walking, and we ended up walking in, like, the complete wrong direction. But then we got to where we were going because we walked through this huge park that has, like, they're not called pagodas, but what are the red things? You yeah, know? yeah. Yeah. Uh, like the arch white tie. I don't Yeah, I, I can't think of what the name is, called. but you know exactly what I'm talking about. But yeah, so there was like a shrine in there, and that was really cool and kind of unexpected because we didn't really know where we were going because that was like the first day we were actually like there, and it wasn't, oh yeah, we need to run to go get to the Airbnb, Airbnb and stuff like that. Um, and then we also checked out the uh, Narita San Temple while we were over there. Highly suggest. And we're hoping that when we go back this time, they'll be doing, like, the full, like, you know, festival kind of thing that you see in anime. You know, like, with the sparklers and, like, the little fish, catch it with the paper thingy, all that good stuff. Because when we were there, they did actually have, like, a couple of booths set up. They had one that had uh, what they called American Fries. Which, they were basically McDonald's fries, yeah, and it was they, absolutely they the, awesome. Yeah, and they had, like, the shaker, and we got, like, cheese on it. It was really good. Um, and then they had, like, the little pop gun game where you have to, like, knock Shoot down the, the prize that you want. Yeah, that was really cool. Um, yeah, so, you know, just also checking out train stations in general are kind of cool because there's, like, little random shops in there. Like, there was the this... The one in Tokyo is pretty awesome. Well, yeah, so, though. of course, definitely te check out the Tokyo Metro... Uh, train station because that Massive. has so many stores in it and all these cool yeah. shops. There and is a uh, Pokemon Center in there, which yeah. is really cool. Yeah, and then there's... super crowded though. Like you're going to be saying "excuse me" a lot. Yeah, there's Pokemon Center, Sanrio. Um, there was a Sanex uh, one, wasn't there? No, or was there was that not really a big thing just yet. So Sanex is popular, but it I don't think it was popular enough at the time to warrant its a storefront. At least that I I didn't know. I mean, we didn't get to check the whole thing. It could have been something, but I don't mm. remember. Um, also, like I didn't see any Sumikos in UFO catchers, but they were around since like I think twenty fifteen yeah, or maybe yeah. even earlier. So I don't know. I mean, maybe they'll be pop more popular now because they did just have a their fir first movie come out. Um, but yeah, so like there was also the jump, like Shonen Jump, they had their own store, so they had like big boxes of like My Hero stuff, which was, that was another thing. We thought that that would be more popular and like I think be it's more actually, present, but it was like kind of, popular in the US, yeah, it was like it more condensed, like it, it has popularity and we saw a lot of like secondhand goods, but like you could go to any store nowadays, like GameStop, Box Lunch, they have huge My Hero displays now. Um, oh, and like Hot Topic too. Um, let's see what else was in there. There was like that interesting pastry place that was making the uh, the fish, the little fish with cakes. the uh, red bean paste in it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and then there was that like really fancy Belgian waffle place. Yeah. The dessert waffles. Oh yeah. Yeah, that was really cool. So yeah, like 
you know, you wouldn't necessarily, like, look at one of our train stations and be like, oh, yeah, I should probably explore everything that that ha- uh, that th- is in here because there's probably some really cool places. Not really. <laughs> Over there? Yes, definitely. 100%. It's, like, definitely a unique experience. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so then um, another thing to factor in is, you know, etiquette and being aware of your surroundings and, you know, trying to be, you know, like I said before, like the best representative of where you come from as you can be. So, you know, obviously you got to take off your shoes when you're supposed to. And then we saw that, you know, obviously keeping things tidy and disposing of trash and recycling is super important. But you would think that there would be more trash cans in various places like there are here. But what we saw was people would, like, get a drink from the vending machines, which are literally everywhere. And they would stand there, drink their drink, and if there was the little recycling thing, you put it there. Or they would take it with them and drink it and then just put it in their backpack to you know, throw away later. Yeah, exactly. So that's kind of the the thing is that people don't generally walk and eat or walk and drink. You will get some weird looks and everything. And, but then again, like you're a foreigner and you know, it's clear, it's usually pretty clear that you're a foreigner. I mean, like anyone could tell when someone's not from their country for the most part. Mm -hmm. But, uh, the thing to remember is that people are also very understanding of this. Like they're not expecting anything like, you know, super un, you know, irrational from you or anything like that. You're going to make some mistakes and you're going to make some social faux pas. It's not that big a deal because at the end of the day, they know you're not from there, but they know that, you know, you admire their country enough to come and visit and put yourself out there and, you know, just basically exist there for a little while. As long as you're not doing anything blatantly offensive or wrong, you'll be totally fine. Yeah, exactly. Um, so then you also, while you're staying at an Airbnb, they'll probably tell you like, oh, this kind of trash goes here. And then this kind of trash goes here. This type of recycling yeah, goes like in this can. burnables. That's a big yeah, thing. Yeah, burnables versus non-burnables. And then like the levels of recycling, like we we have that here, but some places have kind of like fallen out of that where, oh, well, if it's plastic, just recycle it. It used to be, if it's a one, if it's a one, you could definitely recycle it. If it's a seven, you definitely can't. Now it's like one through three, you can It's a whole big thing, too. Mm -hmm. Um, So then we saw, like, while we were eating breakfast one time, because we grabbed um, these little mini pancakes that were just red bean pancakes. They were so good. We got them from the supermarket. We were eating them while walking, and we saw a lot of people, like, staring at us, and we're like, what? What are we doing? Like, what's wrong? So then later on, I looked it up, and, you know, eating while walking is kind of like a faux pas, and we were getting, like, the evil eye a couple of times. Yeah. Um... Well, it's also because, like, so I have a tendency, like, something that I've always done is look people in the eyes, like, even as I'm walking past them. And, uh, like, it's, like, can be seen as, like, a little bit rude to do that, but it's a just a habit that I have that was hard to shake. So, meanwhile, like, I'm walking down the street eating and also staring people in the <laughs> eyes while I'm doing it. Yeah. So, it just kind of seemed like, it probably seemed like I was being a bit, like, you know... Um, you know, intimidating in a way. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, once again, you live and learn. I'm going to try to get better with that. Yeah. That's also where sunglasses help a lot. Like not a lot of people really wear them, but if you're worried about making too much eye contact or anything like that, just wear a pair of sunglasses. Yeah, and then like also like the classic trope of like someone wearing a face mask. You definitely should wear that if you're visibly coughing or visibly sick. That's kind of, like, expected of you. So, like, some people here, you know, like, they'll keep tissues in their pockets or, like, a handkerchief or something like that. Yeah, you don't really do that like that. Yeah, exactly. Just wear the face mask. I mean, even people will do it even if they just kind of feel sick. Yeah. it's uh, People are very conscious of not getting other people sick and not getting sick from other people over there. But, you know, it's just, once again, a cultural thing. Yeah, and then we also saw um, a lot of signs... Uh, that say, like, you know, don't talk on the phone while you're on the train and don't, like, talk really loudly because they have things called, like, quiet cars and then there's also, like, quiet times. Like, certain times in the day, they'll want it to be kind of, you know, more calm and serene and stuff Mm -hmm. like that. 
Um, and then we also saw that certain train cars are actually gender specific because, you know, Japan does have an issue with... Um, Grifters. Well, not gr- gropers, I would yeah. say. Yeah, so, like, they would have, like, a, a women-specific train, and even though me and Brandon are a couple, he wouldn't be able to go on that same yeah. one. Meanwhile, the gropers are like, hey, now I know where they all are. Uh, oh, no, that's bad. <laughs> yeah, I know, No, I know. they're, you know, they're good about, you know... Security on trains is stuff. very good. Yeah, the reason why it's a problem is because you're literally packed in, like, sardines, and I could post that gif where they have professional train pushers pushing people onto the train. So, you know, it's... And, you know, maybe it was by accident or maybe people are doing it on purpose because they're, you know, bad people. But that's you're going to be in close contact on some of those trains at certain times in the day. Mm-hmm. So, you know, try not to bring suitcases on trains if you could avoid it, because we had like four big suitcases and people were not not that happy about it. Yeah. Like, obviously, we were traveling to, like, a hotel or something. Yeah. So, you know, I'm sure they got over it, but at the same time, yeah. they were, you know, not very happy with us. Yeah, and then also, like, you know, bathhouses, certain hotels, that also has, like, gender-specific stuff, too. Like, a lot of the capsule hotels, you know, they say, like, oh, yeah, you know, check that out if you can. I mean, personally, I don't really see the need to. I would rather just stay in an Airbnb. I know it's one of those, like, experience things. But a lot of them were actually just, like, men only. So, like, I couldn't even be in the building with Brandon. Mm-hmm. So I wouldn't want to have to do that. Yeah, and I, so. I actually didn't even do anything like that yeah. either. Because it's, like, if it says men only, I mean, like, it's probably talking about single men. Yeah, more, that's... Which, yeah, like which I was not. Well, and the, a lot of the not. times... Yeah, a lot of the times, the reason why they would have a capsule hotel is because it's super late at night. You miss your train. You miss your flight. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. You're a drunk businessman. You didn't get home on time. You just need a room for the night, just for a little bit until like six a.m. and then you're out of there. Yep. Um, but yeah, and then we also uh, saw a couple of certain stores that had like men only sections and men only floors. Um, you could kind of piece together what we. That's mean. <laughs> more for like that's not even a privacy thing. That's just like for protection of. Yeah ladies yeah because people can't be trusted yeah exactly we also saw a couple of bars and clubs that are for tourists and westerners only so it'll say like no japanese on it and then we've seen a couple of bars that say no foreigners no westerners so you know just keep in mind... I bet those bars are owned by the same people. Probably. It's probably, like, the same room with just two different doors. There's a partition in between yeah. or something. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, just keep in mind, uh, make sure you're paying attention to any signage. Usually yeah. that stuff is easy to figure out because it'll be, like, pictures and Yeah, things. and it's also, like, kind of, you know... So if you are, like, if you're young or you're, you know, a young lady or something along those lines... Just, you know, keep in mind, Japan is one of the safest countries in the world, but just be smart. Like, don't put yourself into any type of unnecessary risk because, you know, Japan has, uh, for instance, Japan has one of the lowest murder counts in the world. (laughs) Yet when we were there, there was a high, high high-profile assisted suicide case that, you know, some person had helped plenty of people in that regards yeah there was also a serial killer that was talked about on bbc that's true and it was literally in the neighborhood we were in in the first airbnb and they caught him on like two days after we had left that area Uh so that was kind of crazy yeah Yeah, so i mean like obviously overall it's one of the safest places in the world um just because of like you know Mm -hmm. the the policies that they have and you know how people interact with each other and there's like more respect for people and things like that. But you know, if you can avoid putting yourself in any sort of dangerous situation, you avoid that. Uh, Yeah. It's just like one of those things, you know, you want to just make sure you're safe. If you are in a group, always try and be in a group. If you need to be by yourself, You can't really have, like, protection on you because you can't really bring anything into the country like that. And that's, like, not the time. I mean, and plus, if you're going to a vacation in a country that you have to bring a knife or a gun with you to increase your odds of safety, you probably shouldn't be vacationing there. That's a good point, Brandon. That's a very good point. Yeah. Yeah, so more than anything, like, you'll be totally fine. Just be smart, hang out with your friends, that type of stuff. And have fun. Yes. Yeah. 
Um, yeah, so then I would say when it comes to communication, you could get away with a lot of stuff using your hands and like pointing at things and body language and stuff like that. So when we first went, um, I was able to read a little bit of stuff, but very, very like minimal things, usually like dates and times and things like that. Cause that's like, you know, basic stuff you learn in Japanese class. I had taken two semesters of that, but that was in college. And that was, I think like three or four years before we went. So that now it's even further from my mind. So this, um, this time around, we want to study up a lot more. And then now, since, you know, me and Brandon live together, we'll actually be able to talk to each other and kind of like practice stuff a little bit more. When I was doing that before, I was by myself because, you know, Brandon and I didn't go to the same college. Um, but yeah, it's like good to look up like the basic phrases. We, you know, we use sumimasen a lot to try to get like people's attention. Because like when we were at the arcade, if you get your prize, usually they have to like come and open up the, um, uh, the glass to like grab it for you. And like reset the items too. So it's like you're kind of alerting them like, hey, you know, I got the thing. And then you can now reset the thing back up. Um, you know, like the just the basic stuff. Um, and then we also, of course, utilized Google Translate a lot. So there was some times where I would literally type out a sentence, get the very basic translation and then just like show it to them. And they're like, oh, oh OK, OK. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like that type of stuff wasn't too bad. I mean, like if you're afraid of, you know, not being understood or not understanding people, there is a ton of English in the country. And yeah, know, a lot of the younger people. Exactly. So like, that's like, what, so like we're taught Spanish in school. They're taught English in school. So yeah, exactly. So that's the type of thing you shouldn't worry too much about. And once again, you know, they know this isn't your home country. They'll understand. Yeah. We want to thank you guys for watching. <laughs> um, for the people that we promised this at Anime Next, we totally appreciate you guys for watching this six months later. And um, I want to say if you guys have any like questions, comments, tips, or anything like that, we can definitely address that stuff in a secondary video if you guys are interested. So if you could subscribe to the channel to keep updated with that, we would totally appreciate that. Um, we love talking about this stuff. Um, you we've know. done it a lot by now. Like, I feel like this comes up, like, we've had this conversation with people a lot, so... Yeah, You know, it's just like, every time it comes up, we remember something else, or we, yeah, exactly. you know, want to talk about yeah, something else. Yeah, we also, we, we also get, like, a lot of younger people saying, like, how? How were you able to do that? This seems impossible and stuff like that. And, you know, that's what Brandon was saying in the beginning. If you set your mind to it and you set some realistic goals, anybody can do this. Um, currently we do not invite people that we don't know on our trips, but maybe in the future, if we can get a little bit more established and like we have a set method on how we get there, we would love to be able to like, you know, share our methods with you guys by actually like setting that stuff up for you and then going with you and like doing a guided tour or something like that. That's totally in the future, but you know, if we can get good enough at this. We would definitely be interested yeah, in plus, doing that. Plus, not to mention, I mean, like, another thing is that, you know, usually we, when we meet people, if we like them and stuff like that, and if it clicks, we usually consider them friends fairly quickly. I mean, we're not that exclusive when it comes to, we're <laughs> not like, oh, yeah, we're the type that really vets people before we decide being friends <laughs> with them is the best course of action. No, yeah. we're not like that. So, I mean, it's a possibility that, you know, we're friends with all types of people and everything. So, you know. Yeah, take that as you will. I yeah. can't speak anymore. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for sticking with us to the end. We're going to try and do like the little annotations. Uh, we're going to put the website links in there. And, you know, hopefully we answered as many questions yeah, as possible. Yeah, just ask us questions. I'm sure there's stuff we missed right now. Because I know as soon as we hit the stop recording button on this. We're going to be like, oh, we're, we're going to say this. Yeah, we're exactly. Say that. Yeah. I mean, yeah. we can always add in more stuff later. But, yeah. Okay. This is Brandon and Eve from Dolphin Quest, uh, reminding you to stay cool. And don't flip out. Bye. See ya.